Hey, what's going on you guys? My name is The Raptor and welcome back to another one of my reaction videos. And today we're going to be reacting to the new episode of Death Battle which just came out, which is Sauron from Lord of the Rings versus the Lich King from World of Warcraft. I am personally very excited for this episode. I really like it when Death Battle delves into new kinds of characters and we haven't seen too many of these like fantasy, in this case corrupted characters before. So I think it's really cool. I'm really excited to see how Death Battle will handle these guys and hopefully it just turns out to be a really fun episode. In terms of who I'm rooting for, I don't really have a strong connection to either one of these characters. I think if I had to pick one, I would go with Sauron. I'm just slightly more familiar with, you know, the Lord of the Rings and Hobbit franchise, you know, all that. Um, but I really don't have a strong attachment to either one. In terms of who I think is going to win, well, I really don't know. A couple weeks ago, I made a prediction video, and in that video, I said that I thought if I had to pick one, that I would pick Lich King. However, I think it really just depends on how Death battle scales these characters, especially for Sauron, because there's some interesting things you could do. Like, there are some higher level characters that you could scale them to if you really want to, but I don't know if Death Battle's going to do that. Um, I feel like there are some, like, obvious advantages, like, both of these characters have fought a lot of different characters, like they have a lot of experience, although Sauron is a lot, and I mean a lot older than at least Arthas himself, you know, so there's definitely that. Um, if I'm not mistaken, I think Lich King has a more versatile arsenal, like more variety in his magic, but I feel like a lot of this is just going to come down to who can scale higher in power. And, you know, World of Warcraft can get pretty crazy, and Lich King is definitely one of the, not one of the strongest necessarily, but he can do some crazy things even within that world. But Sauron, of course, we all know, you know, Sauron's like the final boss of Lord of the Rings, so, you know, I'll just have to wait and see what Death Battle says, and then we'll take it from there. So without further ado, let's get started. All right. Really excited though. Like, I hope this is one of one of the better ones, but we'll see. Sauron, the Lord of the Rings, the Lich King, Warcraft's Lord of the Scourge. Evil has many shapes, but few can match the presence of these kings. Oh, yeah, and Sauron's immortality, you know, is something to Evil consider is too. And boomstick, and it's our job to analyze their weapons, armor, and skills to find out who would win a death battle. And this one's also 3D. Nice. Within the timeless halls, at the dawn of creation, the supreme god Eru and his angelic yep. Eru Iluvatar. Existence through a single harmonious song. But one of these angels just had to be a rebel. Melkor uh. ruined that harmony, giving the world its many, many imperfections, like Wiz. Then after Melkor right. <laughs> single and going rogue, Melkor took up a new name just to be even more metal. More god. Morgoth's power was impressive, daunting. Dark Several enemy, nice. Gaiar, essentially lower ranked angels, joined him in his frightening conquest of the world. Right, and Sauron is a Maya, a Maya. Of these followers was one of the Maya. With destroying all life in the pursuit of bringing about complete order. Right. He used to be Myron, but under Morgoth's reign, he became the one and only Sauron. Hell yeah. As the big week of Morgoth's forces, Sauron spent thousands of years bringing Middle Earth to its knees. He's almost more a force of nature than anything else, able to create inferno. That's what evil does, right? Spanning earthquakes and even absorb souls. And because he's a weird angel spirit man, he can morph his body around his own soul however he wants. Right. Or just shed it like clothing and fight as a ghost. He can morph far beyond that. He has appeared as something akin to both man and elf, attractive and devious. A werewolf, once thought to be the greatest wolf of all, and even a vampire. Oh, Whoa. Man, Tumblr's gonna go nuts this is that. the real Halloween episode. His accomplishments are not due to his powerful magics and weaponry, but his inhuman cunning. Sauron is nothing less than a master of manipulation. Absolutely. Like if Loki and Satan did a fusion dance, <laughs> he loves to trick someone with illusions, shadow magic, or just by toying with their sad, predictable, pathetic human emotions. Right. Like when he convinced Saruman to join the evil side, who was basically a super wizard specifically yeah. meant to lead the charge against Sauron. In some ways, so that's Sauron pretty insane. Is wiser than the master he served. In the most epic war to eclipse all other wars, humans, dwarves, elves, and more united to destroy Morgoth. I like how deep they're going into the lore. I really appreciate that. But Sauron 
one saw it coming and failed faster than me at a divorce hearing just to show back up centuries later in the fiery pits of Mordor. There, the Dark Lord created a plan to conquer everything. He fooled the Elven Smiths into forging 19 rings of power and planted them among the leaders of Elven Man. Yeah, I haven't seen rings of power. All controlled by another but I do have Prime Video, so. Secrets. I don't know. The one ring to rule them all. One ring to find them. One ring to bring them all and in the darkness bind them. Oh, God, that's so epic. I think I'm into <laughs> poetry now. Forged in the fires of Mount Doom using part of Sauron's own soul. The the nearly indestructible. His power nearly. To control the minds and actions of the other ring bearers. The nine kings of men were especially vulnerable and saw themselves reduced to twisted wraiths bent to Sauron's whims. It wasn't any better for the less kingly humans. So much so that Sauron mind controlled most of Numenor. We're talking about an island nation that could have had as many as 18 million people. It's a lot and of people. Sauron had them all at his creepy, pokey fingertips. Wonder if Lich King has any resistances to that. I think he does, Eric, but we'll see. Who had hardly directly intervened ever before, even against Morgoth. Eru sank Numenor while Sauron was still on it. But the Dark Lord spirit persevered, indestructible <laughs> against the wrath of God. Sauron used the ring to build himself a new body. It may have cost a lot of power, but he took a biblical event to the face and went right back on to being right. Evil. And yet, no matter how you slice so it, yeah. One object did have drawbacks. Which hit back hard when Isildur subtracted a digit from his hand. Right. The warrior king did more than just cut off a finger. He took the ring and its power for himself. This act forced Sauron to retreat as a disembodied spirit, threatened by his own power in the hands of another. Mm -hmm. And should the one ring be destroyed completely, Sauron's spirit could be rendered impotent beyond repair. It isn't okay. all that, though. The ring can turn you invisible, create visions of impending doom, and has one hell of a defense mechanism. Yeah, who'd want to destroy it when it makes you want it? Has a will of its own. Oh no, are we gonna get a, a golem boomstick? Best, even the best of us can't refuse the greatest poultry dinner ever. This is the only acceptable way they could have done this this scene. Parmesan, her duckins, <laughs> so precious. What did you just do? What? It sounded delicious. Well, ring or okay, ring, sure. <laughs> he swatted away armies of soldiers and erupted Mount Doom through sheer willpower. Right. He has total control over his own being and can modify his soul at will. So he can definitely resist someone like spooky ghost Caleb Rimbor trying to dominate a spirit. And being okay. the strongest Maiar, the peak of Sauron's power is beyond that of Osei, a lesser Maya, which is right. specifically important because Osei single-handedly raised the island of Numenor. Yeah, remember that island that got no one? Yeah. That place. No wonder everyone wants his ring. Who could turn down that much power? Not as Sildor. The hearts of men are easily corrupted. And he kept the ring. Not me, though. <laughs> but in the end, the ring destroyed him and waited for its master. The ring always destroys Sauron you. Sauron was rebuilding Mordor into a world-conquering force. And after a little bit of good old-fashioned torture, he found out the ring was in the Shire. The chillest, coziest, dopest place imaginable. Does seem like a nice oh, man, place. When I retire... Really I'm calm and quiet. And, just get lit <laughs> and that too, yeah. The ring. Sauron's forces covered the land, seeking both the ring and the downfall of man, mm -hmm. always shadowed by the symbol of his ever-present influence, the Eye of Sauron. It was a slaughter fest. Middle Earth stood no chance. Everybody basically accepted death by orcs as inevitable. It was hopeless. The kingdoms of men would finally fall for good. Save for the Dark Lord's truest weakness. Sauron's cunning and stratagems were impressive, sure. But ultimately, he never truly understood the people of Middle Earth. In his mind, okay. absolute power was factually irresistible. He never imagined a mere mortal could ever or would ever seek to actually destroy the One Ring. Gotcha, yeah. Gods and a whole lot of walking, Sauron was defeated. Not by the sparkly new king or the armies of Middle-earth, but by the most unlikely creature imaginable. Elijah Wood. Yeah. <laughs> as a formless shadow, Do you wear wigs? <laughs> Sauron's legacy remains one of domination, treachery, and most of all, fear. Fitting for the being that represents, and I quote, as near an approach to the holy evil will as is possible. Epic. All right, interesting. I'm, I'm pretty satisfied with that rundown. 
Didn't get too many numbers, though. Maybe they're saving that for later. Alright, hang on. Let's, let's back up a little bit. And yeah, also, link in the description of the original video, which will have the links to all these sponsorship stuff. destruction was imminent. The orc shaman Nerzul prepared a spell with his followers to tear the planet asunder. All right. To escape the fury of the demon lord, Kill Jaden. But when Nerzul waltzed through the portal, Kill Jaden was right there waiting for him. Damn. He <laughs> was forced to serve Kill Jaden's will to ravage another world, Azeroth. Right. Thus, he was transformed into the first Lich King. This lord but we're talking about Arthas, but I'm, I'm sure we'll get there later. Northrend. But Kill Jaden had one more twist for poor Zul. His body was gone, leaving just his spirit, which was bound to a set of armor sealed there within you go. a prison yeah. of magical ice. Man, this guy can't catch a break. Armor looks sick, though. He's it does. Me if I put that on, huh? From his <laughs> oh, prison, man. The Foreshadowing. Lich King his conquest, conjuring an unstoppable plague of undeath. Soon, this would threaten the lives of the kingdom of Lordaeron. Okay, so that was a lot, buddy. Here's where our main guy finally okay, shows up. Okay, great. Lordaeron's <laughs> crown prince and holy knight, Arthas Menethil. There we go. Yeah, his name does kind of sound like something your doctor would give you for fungus, but hey, no, no, no. He did, Arthas yes. Was a badass. At 19 years old, he was considered one of the best swordsmen in the world, and had mastered nearly every weapon he could. Even with such a skill... Interned at Blizzard in 2017. Already <laughs> How old is he? ...war with an orcish horde. So a zombie plague was the last thing Arthas needed. Compounding this even further, Nerzul managed to break free of Kil'jaeden's power and turned his attention toward creating a champion to lead his ever-growing scourge. Okay. Naturally, he chose Arthas, who was a stressed-out mess to the point where he tried to stop the plague by killing everyone in his own city. Holy shit! Yeah, he was totally losing it. So hearing a creepy voice in his head really didn't help. Long story short, in his efforts to protect his realm, Arthas discovered a rune blade and took it for himself. Frostmourne. This was the fearsome Frostmourne. Yeah. Surprise! It's the source of the Lich King's power. Whoa! He was stealing souls and storing them within the blade. With this new ice-cold cleaver in hand, Arthas lost his soul and got a Death Knight makeover. And so the former hero Still looks of good. would lead the very scourge he previously fought. And in time, Arthas would don the armor for himself, giving the Lich King a new, ultimate power. Walking! Remember, everything the Lich King had done up until this point had been from his prison within a literal block of ice. Right. With this new Sauronite armor. Wait, no. Sauronite armor. Okay, good. I was about to say. What, what was it doing stuck in ice all this time when it's made of old god blood and self-repairs? Screw you, blacksmith. You're never taking my hard-earned gold. I'll never have to get naked and die again! Again? Like this dark helm, Nerzul and Arthas fused to become one. A being so much we don't know about Wiz and Boomstick still. Before. He could effortlessly cover cities in ice storms, murder hundreds with the power of shadow, and learn all of your secrets with the eye of Acherus. Azeroth's all right. fate was sealed. Everyone was doomed. See this guy? He's Illidan, a 15,000-year-old demon hunter with a bit of a chip on his shoulder. Okay. As a death knight, Arthas could take him down, even after fighting through a massive army to get to him. Against this new Lich King, Illidan never stood a chance. Right. This is important because Illidan had absorbed the power of Gul'dan, an orc warlock who, alongside his followers, raised the Broken Isles out of the sea, a massively powerful feat of magic. The fact that okay. Arthas, a mortal guy, beat him up is a big deal. Just imagine how kick-ass he'd be in full control of the undying Lich King powers. You could tell oh, me how powerful he is. To. Nerzul may have pulled Arthas' strings up until this point, but he had made a drastic miscalculation. Within the mind of the Lich King, Arthas battled Nerzul for control and won. The power of Frostmourne, of the Scourge, of Undeath itself, was now under the command of Arthas. And by this point, he was just done. Like, with everything. <laughs> right. We all had one of those days, right? Where you see all of humanity is so pathetic they can only be saved by just killing them all so you rip out your own heart. Yeah, really. That is hardcore. Determined to end all life, Arthas led his scourge across Azeroth, spreading the plague to every corner of the world. He slaughtered every contender in his path, including legendary champions like this hero of the Horde, Dranosh Sarfang. Who the Lich King okay. bitch left to death in one hit, then zombified to serve him instead. Man, Damn. that didn't go well. Yeah. <laughs> the King seemed unstoppable. 
Only one thing could take him down. A 25-man raid team of the best nerds World of Warcraft servers had to offer. Right. <laughs> and that one guy who was just there because he was friends with somebody, but damn, he sucked. With these, mm -hmm. uh, heroes triumphant, the Paladin Tyrion It's also like he can canonically wipe out an entire 25-man raid. Ending the Lich King's vile reign. But the Scourge doesn't work on Phantom Menace battle droid rules, so there must always be a Lich King to keep the relentless undead in check. Yeah. yeah. No Lich King before or since ever matched the terror and malice Arthas brought to Azeroth. Without a doubt, one of the most terrifying kings to ever conquer the world of Warcraft. Okay, so that was his rundown. This episode of Death Battle I'm not gonna lie. I'm a little stumped right now, but let, let's let's get through this and we'll talk about it. <laughs> Time for an undead battle. All right, pause it. So this this seems to me like this is gonna be one of those fights where the real like information, okay, not the real information, but like the real stats and capabilities and stuff is revealed like at the end after the fight is done because. We, we were talking about how Sauron, you know, if the ring is destroyed, then his spirit, you know, might just be gone or whatever. But I, I didn't really get much from the Lich King that I think could imply that he either could or could not destroy it, you know? Unless, like, I was talking over something or I missed something, like, in, in the text or whatever. It, it didn't seem like to me they were they were leaning one way or the other with that. Which kind of makes me think then he wouldn't be able to, but who knows, maybe they're going to save that for, um, uh... You know, maybe they're just going to say that for the end and say he can or he can't, you know, so I'm not sure. Um, in terms of the power levels, they were talking about um, how Sauron was stronger than another Maya who, what is it, what, did he sink an island or like bring up an island or something? He manipulated an island. Um, but, then we, but then we saw that um, Arthas, even without the Lich King's power, was able to defeat a character who... Was it they were stronger than a character who did something with like a bunch of land? I don't know how big that land is though. Like, is that supposed to be the size of a country? Is that also more akin to an island? Either way, Sauron and Arthas are more powerful than those characters, but they really didn't throw out a lot of numbers. I do appreciate though how much they were going into the lore. Like, if I can just say that for a second, like again, you know, I know I know a bit of Lord of the Rings. I don't really know that much about World of Warcraft, but I really appreciated how much they were going into a lot of these characters. Probably more characters than they really needed to and more facts but they still did it anyway because you know that that's just what they do right so i i really appreciate how much they were going into the lore um but i, I really i feel like i didn't get much about their speed either they both have a lot of abilities arthas may still have more but i don't know it, it, it the main thing i can really grasp onto is that they said that sauron it, they seem to imply that sauron could really only be stopped if the ring was destroyed so i feel does it just come down to whether or not arthas can do that because if so i feel like i can't really predict this because i i don't know if he could you know but they were talking about how sauron does have some crazy good resistances honestly i really have no idea i, I don't even think i can make a, a real prediction for this because I may, maybe maybe it's just me maybe i'm missing stuff but it really feels like a lot of this information is going to come afterwards and if it doesn't and it turns out they actually laid it all out before me ahead of time then that's on me um but uh but yeah honestly i i, I really have no idea who's going to win this one i'm just excited to see um to see this battle so without further ado let's watch this fight i'm really excited to see how it goes there's Lich King, looking all evil. And that's Sauron. Speaking all evil. <laughs> you just want all the power, right? So greedy. But one of you will. Okay, interesting. I do think this fight works best with 3D. But we'll see how it is. Okay. Summoning evil. Something tells me that's not going to be enough. <laughs> Ooh, that looks cool. Oh, damn. Ooh! I like that. 
Come on, Arthas, you're better than that. So. <laughs> that was a cool line. All right, all right, we're ramping up. Oh boy. I mean, something I forgot to mention Sauron took an attack from God. I don't know. Oi, oi, oi. Oh. Hmm. Okay. Is that enough? Oh, boy. Now he's a spirit. We all knew it was going to come down to this. Oh my god, this looks so cool. Jeez. Oh, oh no. Frostmorn? Oh, I don't I don't think this is good for for Lich King. This is giving me such chills. <laughs> oh no. Is that it? Is that the kill shot? I, mean, I think it was. Yeah, whenever it cuts to black. Yeah, okay, so Sauron won. Supercharged Sauron now. Right. <laughs> Despite the Lich King's impressive power, Sauron's might was absolute. But not before he got the duel of his life in a crazy close bout. First up, both Dark Lords could counter pretty much any mind or soul screwing power. Yeah. Making a lot of their usual tricks way less noteworthy in this match. To be fair, the Lich King severely debilitated Sauron via his plague of undeath. Most physical bodies would not survive such a disease. So right. Sauron just got rid of his body. Who needs it? Especially when you can reap the <laughs> well, yeah. to start fighting as a ghost. Both things Sauron could do. After all, the plague is intended for organic mortal enemies and has never infected a spirit. Another small okay, point for fair Sauron enough. was his weakness. The Lich King was a clever bastard, but even with the Eye of Acherus, it would have been tough for him to decode and destroy the One Ring. Meanwhile, given enough power, Sauron would naturally end up destroying Frostmourne. He's kinda got a thing for breaking swords. So let's compare their Okay. Power. While their highest limits are certainly nebulous, interestingly enough, some of the most impressive feats from both worlds involve lifting islands. As Sauron that's what, yeah, okay, that's what I was thinking they were they were going with. The Lich King could reliably defeat someone with Gul'dan's magic. It is possible to gauge the difference in power by measuring the islands that were raised. Okay, there we go. I'm like, I don't know how big that the uh, the World of Warcraft place was, you know. By examining official maps to determine the volume of the islands. We found a difference between lifting two quadrillion tons of rock versus four quadrillion tons. Among further energy required to actually lift these through the ocean, of course. Both impressive, right. sure, but Sauron had the edge. And for the final nail in the coffin, the Lich King might have been super scary, but he really wasn't around for all that long. Yeah, not when compared to the experience that's definitely a, a good point for Sauron. For thousands of years. The Lich King certainly posed a threat to Sauron, but the ruler of Mordor's awesome might, enduring spirit, and millennia of treachery proved him the superior Dark Lord. Wow! All right. Is that is that it? <laughs> what? Are you Sauron the pun? I was pretty Tolkien about it. Hey. The is Sauron. All right. Good job, Sauron. Hey, if you want more death metal ASAP. All right. So I'll talk about that after. Let's see who's next. Emotes, badges, live chat, live streams, and a bunch of behind-the-scenes stuff. Just click that join button. Thanks for yeah, watching. Yeah, if you guys want to be a channel member, go ahead. Next time, My Hero Rocket Deku versus Asta? Really? Hang on. Deku versus Asta.
I would okay. I was expect when I saw Deku, I'm like, okay, so um, that could either be like a Gone from Hunter Hunter. That's like the one that I hear a lot, and like you know, there's also Kamala Khan, Miles Morales. You know those characters. Um, I I have heard Asta before, but like not nearly as much. At least not me. Like I I haven't heard it. Maybe maybe it's actually been around longer. But um, and and for Asta, I always assumed that he would just end up fighting Meliodas. Um, all right, that's, that's interesting. Although these characters do have their fair share in common. Like, isn't it that they're both like, you know, they were, they were the depowered characters. Like they weren't, they didn't have access to like the special things in their world. Like Deku didn't have a quirk and Asta didn't have magical abilities or anything, but then they started like growing more and more and more powerful. Like Deku got his own quirk and Asta with the anti-magic and then they, you know, now they're like super powerful or whatever. Okay. That's interesting. Um, definitely not what I would have thought the fight would be, like, if, if Deku or Asta had come to death battle. Um, but I guess, you know, from a popularity perspective, I guess this makes a little more sense than Asta versus Meliodas. I still would have liked to see that fight, though. And for Deku, he has, like, so many options, so it doesn't surprise me that, um, that really any of them could have happened, you know, so, so this, this is perfectly fine. Um, may, maybe some of you are disappointed by this, this matchup idea, or maybe, maybe a lot of you love it. If so, that's great. Um, I think this one works fine though. That, that's just me. Um, but anyway, talking about, uh, Sauron versus, uh, Lich King. Um, this was very interesting, a very interesting, uh, death battle. Um, the fight was definitely not as fast paced as a lot of the other ones, but I feel like that kind of worked to its advantage. Like, we needed to see, like, the scope of their power and all of that. Um, and I, I feel like, for the most part, they did that pretty effectively. Um, I feel, may maybe at some points, if they went a little faster, I feel like it would have been a little better, but even still... Sorry, I feel like a lot of what they did was appropriate and really fit the characters. I really like the dialogue in this. There were a lot of really cool lines. Um, and the just the visuals in general, like, you know, Sauron when he lost his physical body. Like, I just thought that looked amazing. Um, like, I'm really happy that the, the 3D, like, really worked for these characters. And I'm like, if they did sprites or whatever, I don't think it would have looked as good. Like, the best they could have done with 3D would be better than the best they could have done with sprites for these characters. Um, and I just think it worked really well here. Um, again, maybe not the best they could have possibly done, but I still think it was good. Um, and again, in terms of the analyses, I just, I really appreciate it when they go into more than they have to. I guess, though, they spent a lot of time on the world themselves. Maybe I would have liked it if they spent a little more time on the characters and their capabilities. Again, like, the whole, I called it with the whole thing about the um the island or whatever like the place in world of warcraft i didn't know how powerful that was going to be um and i i thought that may have been like a big a big factor in it um and, and there is probably like other kinds of scaling you can use with these characters i know i definitely used other kinds of scaling in my prediction um but personally it doesn't really bother me too much that they went with something a little different um but uh but yeah they uh i still think they went into a good amount of detail um about about a lot of stuff um i did really like that um that one cutaway or that one skit with boomstick looking at the ring because I'm like what else are you gonna do with that right um so I, I really appreciated that um and the conclusion does make enough sense to me like really if it just comes down to um you know who who just got better defenses and who's gonna be more prepared to win a fight like this then uh then yeah like just Sauron has he can shed his physical body you really kind of have to destroy the ring if you want to like do the best kill you can or the easiest kill you can or whatever. Um, and he's just got way more experience. So, you know, and, and both of them have a lot of abilities. Like even if Lich King is technically more versatile, um, it, it makes enough sense to me that like both of them have like a good amount of resistances. Both of them have a lot of tricks up their sleeve. Um, like it totally makes sense to me. Um, but, uh, but yeah, no, I, I've no, no issue with this episode. I think it was, I don't know how it would compare it to the rest of season nine, just cause a lot of the episodes in season nine are so good, but I was so, still satisfied with this episode. I can definitely say that. And I hope you guys were too. But let me know what you guys thought of it. Did you enjoy it? Did you not enjoy it? Who do you think should have won? Let me know down in the comments below. I'd love to hear what you guys have to say. If you enjoyed this episode, be sure to give it a like. Comment your comments down below. Subscribe if you could too. That would be amazing. But no matter what you guys do, thank you all so much for watching. I really do appreciate it. And yeah, that's it for me. I will see all of you guys in the next video. Peace out.